Sup you phonies, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna show you how you can make a thumbnail in Blender, a YouTube thumbnail, because usually those are made in Canvas or Photoshop or other photo editing softwares, but there is not that much out there about how to make a 3D thumbnail for your videos. And since Blender is a free tool, I think that can be very helpful. So stay tuned and let's go. So we are here in Blender and this is what my scene look like when I start. I have a camera and a Michal. I'm going to keep them for now, but I'm probably going to delete at least the Michal here. So first we need to figure out what do we want in our thumbnail? What is this video about? We we're making this thumbnail for. And in this case, the thumbnail describes the video how to make thumbnails on, in Blender. So I'm probably going to add the title in my Blender scene and also probably going to add the Blender logo in 3D because I usually have those two dimensional because I do those in Photoshop. But now we're going to do that all in 3D. So let's see. The first thing we're going to start with is the text. To add a text, hold Shift A and under text, just click text. Now we have a text saying text. Now I said text like 20 times in a row and I apologize. So I just rotate it upwards, turn it 180 degrees so it's facing our camera. Now we don't want the text to be saying text. We want it to say something else. And to edit this, hit tab. And now we are in edit mode, so we can just type in whatever we want, just like in any other editing software too. And in that case, it's going to be thumbnails in Blender. All right, that'll do for now. Now on our right side, we have the text options, so we can manipulate the text. And under geometry, under extrude, we can make it thicker. You can see now it's not a 2D text anymore. It's three dimensional. We can make it as long as we want, but probably we want to keep it somewhat small. Now under depth, we can bevel the edges a little. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see the difference. Look at this edge, perfectly sharp. And as we know, in nature, nothing is completely perfectly sharp. So we're going to add a little depth, just, just a little bit like this. Perfect. From further away, you barely see a difference, but if you were closer, then you can definitely see it. So adjust this number here. By the way, if you hold shift but, and you adjust something, then you can fine tune a little. If I didn't hold shift, it would be way harder to manipulate those. So hold shift until you're happy. And we still can edit it. Let's say we want Blender to be in the next line, for example. Go out of uh, edit mode, bring it a little up, nice. In the top view, I'm going to adjust my camera a little so I have an idea of, of what I want of, for an angle. It might be something weird like this, but it still has to be readable. Because there is a few rules when it comes to thumbnails on YouTube, just in general. The most important rule is that it's all readable. You don't want some weird angles where you can barely read what, what we're doing here. You want it to be readable, so you don't want to be too abstract. But I also want to showcase what's possible to do in Blender, things you cannot do in Photoshop. So I'm probably gonna take a, use an angle like this, maybe a little higher. And right now I'm adjusting my camera here. You can see the camera floating around because I'm adjusting the camera angle. That's what we're gonna render later. So now, of course, we also need the Blender logo in 3D. There is a way to bring any kind of logo you have, like a two-dimensional logo, bring it into your Blender scene and also make it 3D. But we're not gonna cover that today. There would be a subject for just one video. So I went to Sketchfab and found this beautiful Blender logo model. So we're just gonna use that. It's for free. Anyone with a Sketchfab account, which anybody can create one, can access that, go and download and I'm going to download a blend file because usually I would download the FBX. They don't have any FBX here, so I'm going to use the blend file. Once you download it, this is mine. You can just drag and drop it into your Blender scene. And now it's important not to hit link. You want to hit append 
because link means if I adjust my Blender logo within this scene, it's going to also adjust the original. I don't want that. I only want if I even going to adjust anything. I want it to be only in this document. So I'm going to use append. Now this pops up and now we're going to have to find the mesh and append this guy. Now I have my logo down here. I rotate 90% and 90 degrees. So now it's upright. It's just uh, faced the wrong way. So I rotate it on the Z X 180 degrees. So now it's facing the right way. Now I'm going to bring it to the position I want. I think I want to scale it up a little. The thing is right now, whatever the reason might be when I scale it up, it doesn't scale up on its own ori origin. The origin of this is somewhere down here. We just hit on our object, go on object, set origin and origin to geometry. Now, when I scale it up and down, it scales amongst the, its own axis. So I'm going to bring it a little closer to the camera because why not? We could add some depth of field. So only the T down back here is in focus and everything else is going to be slowly out of focus to create more depth. So I don't think we're going to need the Miho here. I'm just going to delete him. Great. Since I'm pretty happy with my camera angle here, hit N, go in view and check this off. Now when I move my camera up here, I actually don't move my camera. It's stuck there. I can go back to the camera view. One thing to keep in mind when you make thumbnails in general, that you don't want to bring any important information down here. Because when you look at thumbnails down here, usually it says the number of the length of the video and then so the logo would be blocked by that. So we don't want this. So just keep that in mind. Do not put any important information in the bottom right corner. Now I'm going to go to cycles because in cycles, I'm going to see how the lighting is interacting with everything. So right now I just see everything is a very gray. It should be totally, totally black, but it's not because when I go in world settings, I see that I have a gray background and I don't want this. I just going to delete it. So now it's just completely black because there's no lights in the scene. And now there's a few things I could do. I could use either an HDRI. Let's try that. And that looks pretty good. In that case, the background would be a little too distracting, but I can always rotate my HDRI to have a better background, something which is not that busy, but I can also just use the lighting information and not use the background at all. That could be the perfect option here. So I'm just going to rotate my HDRI until I like the lighting the best. And I usually like it when my objects are backlit like this. Now I'll go under the render properties, go down until I find film and hit transparent. So I don't see my background anymore. So now if I rendered this, it would be on a black background, which I don't really want either. So if you just want one plain background, the shift A, go on mesh, plane, bring the plane behind our subject, rotate it on the X axis, 90 degrees and make it big. So it just fills the entire background. And now let's just give it a new material. I click on world, object, give it a new material. Right now it's just white and we don't need a principled PSDF if we just want to change the background. So we're just going to delete that and make an emission node instead plug this into the surface. So now it's just white. If we want to change the color, we can make it red or orange or whatever color we want. The other tip for YouTube thumbnails is you want them to be bright. You don't want anything to be black. That doesn't look good in thumbnails. Nobody's going to click on it or if it's too uh, dark. So just to keep, keep that in mind, keep your thumbnails bright. Yeah, that's not bad. You could give it a little color in any direction. Let's make it a little blue. And now let's give our thumbnails in Blender. Let's give this also a material because it's kind of boring if it's just like that, maybe like a stone. And for materials like that, I like to use Polyhaven. It's also for free. It's a plugin. I, they have tons of uh, HRIs and models and textures, and I always like to use those, but you always need to adjust them a little. So this is called Aerial Rocks. It has a roughness, a base color and a normal. So we have to adjust a few things. Most importantly, we don't want the UV, we want the object into the vector. That's the first step. The next one is, I think we 
adjusted the size of our words of our text so we hit Control a and apply the scale the next step is go on aerial rocks and go instead of flat we want it to be box and on each one of those notes now it still looks kind of funky and that's probably because of our displacement map you might we might just want to turn this off we, we don't need any displacement but if you do want to use it then let's see what we can do for a good displacement map you usually need more geometry but let's see if we can just use a little bit okay this is scale zero if we just go scale on a little bit it should be a little three-dimensional sticking out a little as long as it's readable because right now it's kind of hard to read it so better less than too much great and be aware you're not going to see the displacement in eevee you have to be in cycles to actually see the displacement i want to adjust the roughness a little to make this rocks or my text a little shinier and for that i'm going to make another note shift a and go on color ramp plug this between my note here and roughness and just increase the contrast because that way I could make it a little shinier so it gets the backlight a little more. I might need to adjust the camera angle too. So now I'm gonna hold shift and right click on my T because that's where I want my focus to be. I'm gonna make a new object, empty. Let's just use the arrows here. I'm gonna call it focus empty. Now I'm gonna hit my camera, go on my camera settings, go down to depth of field, turn it on and with this pick whip selection tool i'm going to select my focus empty now the focus is where the t is if you reduce the f-stop you can see that things starting to get out of focus so you want to be very careful with that don't you don't go too crazy there only because you can keep it realistic you can also bring your blender logo closer to the camera make it smaller it's always an option because then it's going to be more out of focus and apply the scale so that's a pretty cool blender tutorial thumbnail but let's see what else can we do with this scene because blender is such a big software and we can work with lighting and all those different features so let's make something more interesting i'm going to make a cube shift a cube i'm going to go to top view i'm going to make it the same scale like our words you can even make it a little smaller i'm going to select those two edges on the side and bring those to the far end i'm going to go to the side view select my cube again edit mode select the bottom two edges bring them down that my entire words are surrounded by box and exit edit mode we're back in object mode now i'm going to use my words as a boolean for my little wall here for that i'm going to apply the scale of my wall first i'm also going to apply the scale of my words now it's important that you you have to be sure that your words are fine the way they are and if you are click on your words hit Control a just like we applied the scale now we go to visual geometry to mesh now the words are not words anymore i can't edit them you, i can't change the words anymore i can only manipulate edges just like any other model but that's important now we go on our box on our cube here make sure it's exactly where you want we need to extend our box a little let me bring this face out a little more there you go and this one as well now we're going to select our box add modifier this is under the modifier options and a little wrench here add a modifier find boolean and now under object we're going to use our text now also add a subdivision surface you can find it under add modifier and the sub d surface adjust those two numbers to at least three hit simple and now you have a perfect boolean so you can look through your words that alone doesn't do much but if you play with the lighting you can have a light shining through from the other side let's do that shift a light area light i'm going to bring it to the same height right behind it turn it towards our model here make it bigger under the light section then we're just going to make it very strong now that also is not going to do much on its own but if we add some haze that could make us a very cool effect so shift a i'm going to make a cube 
bring it to the center make it big so the camera is going to be in it too we don't need as much the up and down so we're just going to keep it as big as we need command uh, control a apply the scale and we're going to give this also a new material delete the principal bsdf make a volume scatter instead link this with the volume this goes to 0.6 now the density maybe 0.1 now we're going to adjust the scale of our area light let's make it actually let's turn this into a spotlight it might work better adjust the scale of our volume box a little better now we're going to make our spotlight very strong so now you see the light is shining through it now we're just going to adjust the, the the position of our area light a little of our spotlight so it's shining exactly where we need it and we're going to add a ground technically we don't want the volume box behind it we only want it in front of it so that should help with that let's give our ground also a material let's make it very rough let's make it black specular it down make the radius bigger and just the cone that it's just barely hitting our box here because we don't really want lights to go over or under so adjust it until it only hits the cone really you can also adjust it by hitting s and uh, z so adjust it to the up and down so it's only hitting our box here now make sure to also turn off your text in the render now when you render it you can see through and the light is shining through and that's another cool thumbnail you can make in blender and now with all those new features we just learned we can just create something completely new Let's just use only our box here. We're also going to use our volume box, but we're going to make it way less. So it's uh, not this, this thing, 0 0.01. Now we're going to add another HRI. So it's like nice and friendly, YouTube friendly. Let's go to our render properties, go down to film, have it not transparent. I actually want to see it. Delete our plane. We don't want this in the background. So we have the nice sun here. So let's ro rotate our HDRI to like a nicer position. I only want blue sky behind it so we can read the words very well. So that's good. Let's bring our Blender logo somewhere where we can see it very well. That's of course to close, bring it a little further back. We can even rotate it a little towards the camera, but we don't want to lose the 3D effect. So don't point directly at the camera, so maybe a little sideways go to object turn up our volume box uh, and our volume scatter a little up so we get a little more haze in there let's get rid of our area light we don't need this anymore now let's give our box also some kind of material so it's not just boring white let's see if we have something here aerial sand let's use that now in the material options we're going to do the same thing we did before Reminder, since it's a three-dimensional object, instead of flat, it has to be box in all of the notes. And also go to the very far left to the texture coordinate, go on object and connect this with the vector. Now it's a great material. What we don't want is the displacement, so we're just going to mute it so it's nice and clean. And just our camera a little, our Blender logo, bring it to the right position, right rotation, hit on render, and that's our thumbnail. So it really can be very fast and you can be very creative with it. The way I made my thumbnails are very simple, but you can of course go crazy, but keep in mind, you don't want to go overboard with your thumbnails on YouTube because it just gets too distracting. You want to get to the point when you go through different videos on YouTube, you, you want your thumbnail to stick out having them nice and bright and that way people are going to click on your videos hopefully i hope it all makes sense if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video Toodoo.